Okay, so in this problem we're told a brass plug is to be placed in a ring made of iron. At 15 degrees Celsius, the diameter of the plug is 8.753 centimeters, and that of the inside of the ring is 8.743 centimeters. They must both be brought to what common temperature in order to fit? And then B, what if the plug were iron and the ring brass? So what you want to imagine here is we have two rings. We have an iron ring and a uh, brass ring. We know the diameter of this brass, or sorry, one is a plug. So this is a brass plug here, and then this is a iron ring. And so we know the diameter of the iron, uh, or the plug is 8.753 centimeters, while uh, the diameter of the ring is 8.743. And so what we're trying to do is put this brass uh, plug into this ring, but notice that it's bigger. And so basically we're trying to find out what temperature Right, at what common temperature can we bring them to uh, in order for this to actually be able to fit? And so notice that the brass temperature uh, is obviously going to have to um, decrease in order for this ring to shrink to actually be able to fit into this. So keep that in mind. And then uh, there's some other things you know, uh, need to know, which is the coefficient of linear expansion for both of these. So the coefficient of linear expansion uh, is basically how much they're going to expand or decrease. Uh, it's different for every material, and it's just a constant. So for iron, it's 12 times 10 to the minus 6. Uh, and then for brass, it's 19 times 10 to the minus 6. So that's what we know. And so uh, the formula we're going to use is the linear expansion formula. Basically, uh, it's equal to delta L, or your change in length, equals uh, alpha, right, which was your coefficient of linear expansion, times your initial length, times your delta T. And so we use this whenever we're looking at um, a material. right? Imagine just like a long wire here. And we're basically going to see how much it expands or how much it'll contract based on some temperature. And so you may be wondering, well, this is a ring here. This isn't a, a uh, right, this isn't a, a wire. So how does this work? So uh, first, let me actually explain how we're going to do this. So basically, we're trying to find the common temperature they should be brought to. So what we're going to do is take them and essentially set them equal to each other. So uh, we know that the length of the brass, right, you can imagine this is the diameter. So the length or diameter of the brass plus the change in length of the brass is going to be equal to, we want them to be equal, right? So we can just put it in. So that's why we're setting them equal to each other. Plus the length of the iron plus the change in length of the iron, right? And what the length represents is uh, the radius. Now, so as I said before, this is generally used for a wire, but we can use the same formula for the... Uh, diameter or radius of a uh, ring here. And so let me explain how that works. So you can imagine the ring, right, this ring just as a long piece of wire, just like obviously it's curved into a circle, uh, but just imagine it as a long wire, right? And now what is the length of this wire? Well, it's basically the circumference of a circle. Now, what is the circumference of a circle equal to? Well, we know it equals two pi r. And if that's the case, then the length would be two pi r, right? So the change in two pi r, we'll call it, which is the circumference, is equal to alpha multiplied by 2 pi r, which is the initial uh, length, right? Because it's the circumference of the circle, uh, multiplied by delta t. And notice, if I factor out 2 pi on the left, we'll get 2 pi delta r equals alpha 2 pi r delta t. And then you should notice the 2 pi's cancel. So you'll get change in the radius, right? You can use radius here or diameter. It doesn't really change it because they're just basically the same value, just uh, factored differently. So alpha equals r delta t. So notice you can just use it the same. It doesn't actually change it. So we're able to use this linear formula uh, for the radius or diameter of a circle. So you can also use diameter. So the change in the diameter equals alpha delta t. So hopefully that makes sense how you derive uh, the use for the ring here based on this linear formula. Uh, and yeah, so basically uh, what we can do now is basically just go ahead and plug it in. So uh, you should know the change in length of the brass right, is going to be alpha, uh, right, keep in mind this is for the brass, the initial length of the, or initial diameter of the brass, right, because I'm just going to write L though, so keep in mind when I'm writing L, I'm talking about the diameter, times delta T. And so this would be the same for the iron, right, just alpha L delta T. And what we're going to do is we're just going to replace uh, the change in length for both of these uh, with this. So we have the initial length of the brass plus, so this would be alpha, I'm just going to write B for brass, 
So alpha B length B times the change in temperature. So keep in mind their change in temperature is going to be the same. So we have L and then uh, this is L of the iron plus alpha, uh, we'll just say I, L, I, and then delta T. And so keep in mind, we want to solve for uh, delta T. So, right, because if we can get the change in temperature, and then we can just basically, uh, with that, we'll be able to solve for what temperature we want it to be at. And so uh, we know uh, what we want to do is basically move this to the other side and then move this to the other side. So you'll have the length of the brass minus the length of the iron is equal to alpha i and then minus alpha b l b delta t. So all I did was move this to the other side and move that to the other side. Uh, and then we would factor out the delta t and then divide by uh, these values here. So what you'll get is delta t equals l, I'll just call it l b now, and then l, this is supposed to be l, l i, uh, Right, and keep in mind this is the initial length, right? So uh, Li, Lb over Li, uh, divided by alpha, alpha I, Li, minus alpha B, Lb. So this is our formula here. If we have the length of the brass minus uh, the length of the iron, or this is the diameter, and then just divide by this, we'll get what the change in temperature is. So it's really just a matter of plugging it in now. So we're going to have uh, the initial length of the brass is 8.753. So 8.753 minus 8.743, I believe. Yeah. Dividing by alpha, let's see what it is. So it's going to be 12 times 10 to the minus 6 times length of the iron, 8.743 minus 19 times 10 to the minus 6 uh, multiplied by 8.753. So let's go ahead and plug this in now. 8.753 minus 8.743. And you have 12 times 10 to the minus 6 times 8.743. Uh, let me plug this in. 12 times 10 to the minus 6 times 8.743 minus 19 times 10 to the minus 6 times 8.753, right? And then you're going to divide your 0 0.01 by that value, and you will get minus 162. So minus 162.89 is going to be your change in the temperature. So uh, let's see. Let's go back. So the change in the temperature... Right, what they want us to find is, uh, what do they say? Yeah, so they both, they both must be brought to what common temperature? Well, we know the change in the temperature is going to be this value right here, minus 162.89 degrees Celsius. Uh, and we also know that they start at a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. So basically, you're just going to do 15 minus this value, 162.89, right? So go ahead and do that. So we have 15 minus that value. And you'll get minus 147.89 degrees Celsius. So this is going to be the common temperature you have to bring them to in order for it to be able to fit. The reason this works is because uh, the coefficient of thermal expansion for brass is much higher than that of iron. So this one actually does move faster. So yeah, if it wasn't, then it wouldn't be able to. but Notice that since it is, it'll, it'll, it'll move much faster. So we're actually able to do it. So we'd have to move it to minus 147 degrees Celsius, though, which is pretty cold. So, uh, yeah. So that's going to go ahead and be your answer to A. And then for B, uh, let's go ahead and do B. So B is basically wanting us to find, uh, let me read it. Uh, what if the plug were iron in the ring brass? So what would happen if this thing, right? So this is the plug. We're going to assume this is now iron. And then this is brass. 
right? So obviously that changes these things right here. So we, this is now 19 times 10 to the minus 6. Uh, this is now 12 times 10 to the minus 6. And uh, yeah. So notice, though, the formula is going to be the exact same. The only thing, if we swap the values like this, we should be able to just solve it, right? Because all we're doing is swapping their places. That's what we're imagining. But we're still solving for the change in temperature. So when we use this formula, we're just going to use the new values that we wrote up here. So, uh, right, so this would just now be like the length of the iron minus the length of the brass, right? But uh, I'll just plug in the values when they're swapped. So just keep in mind that we swapped the values. So uh, we're going to use this one on the left now and this one on the right, right? Because we're just swapping their places. So all we have to do is just swap uh, the values for each. And then we're going to take these values and they're going to be in front now. So 19 times 10 to the minus 6 times 8.753 minus 12 times 10 to the minus 6, 8.743. And so when you do this, you're going to get a delta T. Uh, let's calculate it. So uh, should you should get about 164. You might get a little different than this. This one I had the exact value, but I have the value out in front of me, and it's about 164. So 164 degrees Celsius, that's the change in temperature. Uh, so obviously it's going to have to increase this time. And so uh, we're going from 15, and then we're going to go up 164 degrees Celsius. So 179 degrees Celsius. Uh, yeah, so 179 degrees Celsius, that's going to be the new temperature they're going to have to get to if we uh, just change the materials. Uh, but yeah, so uh, this is going to be your answer to A, so you can write minus 148 degrees Celsius if you'd like. So 179 for B, uh, minus 148 for C. And notice that uh, right, we're going to have to heat it up because now the we swap places. So we're trying to take the smaller one and put it in the bigger one. So obviously it's gonna to have to increase. And yeah, so just talk about how we did this. We used the linear linear expansion formula, but we were able to get it in terms of diameter. So that's a cool trick to know based off uh, using the circumference there. Uh, but we wanted to find their common change in temperature. So basically we want to set them equal to each other so we can figure out their same size, right? And since we know they start at the same temperature, if we can just solve for the change in temperature to get them to the same size, right? Or the same diameter, because right? if they have the same diameter, they're going to be the same size. So if we can actually solve for that, then we'll be able to uh, find the change in temperature relative to where they're at now. So that's why we set them equal. And then when you did that, you just solve for the change in temperature. And then you just add it to your initial temperature, and that'll give you uh, what their new temperature needs to be at the point where they're the same size. right? So they can actually fit. And then for B, it was just a matter of swapping the values uh, because... They wanted us to change it, right? The materials. Uh, but yeah, so these are going to be your answers, minus 148C and 179C. Uh, and yeah, so hopefully you found this uh, video useful.